Hi, this is the weekly recap for end of June and week ahead, a shorter week ahead. So we are Monday the 1st, it is 3.20 a.m. Eastern Time and we start with the July regular. July regular has been fairly stable, a bit of a lackluster performance because we have a little theta right here. But uh, with a crazy market we've had, uh, we can't really complain. The trade is doing okay on its way for about $800, $800 if we leave it on a bit longer. 650 660 The short call is on 30.75 and as I've said in a previous video, market is shooting to the 29.78 when you're on. So it's not looking great, but if we have at least some strong resistance on 29.70 to 3000, that should be okay. 3000 could actually hurt the trade, so what we can still do is, of course, that uh, this one costs about uh, less than a dollar eighty cents. So we could just uh, get rid of it and even pay for it with some PCS here or PCS roll. There's not much to make on this side because they're pretty low. So if I was to close this one, we would have a flat delta and probably nothing to worry about. So this, if we get, uh, maybe we can get rid of one strike here. So this is something we could do, a kind of a risk reversal that would cost probably like 30, 50 cents, yeah. So this is something we can do for peace of mind. We would add back some capital into this trade, so this is not great. And if I just roll, which is not really necessary, uh, we get about uh, 60 cents. So this one would cost next to nothing if I just go for this. We keep some, some theta. I mean, this is really not a great trade, great cycle, but that's all the overall, we haven't done too badly without managing this trade too actively. So not much to do here. And if necessary, because it's soon time to enter the September trade, we can always close it for two to three percent. So that's it for this one. We can have a look at the B2B trade, which I closed last week. Uh, this one I closed for about a thousand dollars. It was really no train smash on this one. If we had left it on, it would have probably lost a hundred dollars. So I'm glad I closed it a bit early. And I can have a quick look at the trade log. As you can see, 27th started closing the trade. But overall, we didn't do much on this one. And anyway, as you can see, 18.20, and then closing it uh, gradually on 27 and 28. Right, the August trade is also kind of boring. Let's go back to live. Hovering around zero. It's got a bit of a neg negative delta, but we have the short, uh, short calls on 3,100, so not much to do. As you can see from the trade log, I have been a bit hesitant about playing on the call side as much as uh, adding a more localized structure. So the layers are being pretty wide, wide iron condors. What did we do last week on the 25th? Uh, on, on the 25th, I sold the CCS and then pretty safe up there. And I just rolled. Uh, basically, it is a kind of a reverse RV with capital control. So I pulled back the upper long and I reduced the uh, and I, I pushed the lower long from 2600 to uh, from 2575 to 2600 for next to nothing, about one dollar. So uh, what can we do to this trade now on 2970 to 3000? Are we are we going to have a strong reaction? It's difficult to say. So this trade is safe, not producing, but um, overall volatility has been on our side, allowing us to enter for very cheap. So when volatility when volatility dwindled, we had very little potential loss on the upside, which I have basically reduced to next to nothing with the CCS. I believe the upper expression line is about zero. So either we do nothing or I carry on with the RTT mutation, which would be just adding this, um, $2,000. So probably, how much do we have here? Um, here we would probably, if I just add P PDS here, so still a kind of a short condor that would yield almost $2. So we would be then on positive territory here. 
delta would be flat. I wouldn't be too concerned about Vega, especially this far from the tent. Maybe this micro tuning will do nothing. 46 DTE. So I'd, again, I don't expect to make, make much, but it's been uh, risk control. And um, to be honest, it's been fairly easy because we entered the, at the right time, early June, when we had a positive, positive environment in terms of volatility. I actually posted on Slack this kind of screenshot from my program SOAP, where now it allows to not only check the uh, premium IV versus uh, HV, but I've coded the uh, uh, alignment. So basically, I basically this IV is actually the IV 30 uh, days ago. In doing so, we align expected volatility to realized volatility. And we see that when we entered 30 days ago, we had early June a very good premium. Of course, it's an ex post, so after the fact type of analysis. But that explains why we entered early June on a very good environment. So when volatility decreased, we had very little to lose. So basically, as long as you keep your delta flat, we were basically unharmed by the rise in, in terms of, uh, of delta because it was very well compensated by the fall in volatility. Anyway, this is a bit of an aside, but I believe it's an interesting information provided by the software. Right, so this one, little to do, but of course uh, we could do more if, uh, if we were to add a localized structure. Last week and the week before, I was hoping, I, I was considering actually adding a localized structure in the 2900s, which could have been okay. Um, uh, and it's of course at uh, anyone's discretion to add a baby fly in this area and we could still do it today or, or this week so if I was to do that I would probably consider something like uh, maybe on a 2950 or 2975 a smaller fly like this it wouldn't have little impact or we can uh, go for uh, and as you can see it also adds about two thousand dollars of capital um, that that should yield about three point five dollar credit with a of course a bit of a a trough here and we would gain about five delta so this this kind of structure would be advantageous if the market really goes past the 3000 area so it's not really something I would like to play with um, and it is not a layer that is technically part of the rhino although adding baby broken butterflies is something I've done in the past so in a bullish market, that's something that could be considered. The more regular type of rider does consider adding sometimes a, a cold broken butterfly. So we could also maybe do something like this. That, that would cost about nothing. Uh, but do would I want to have a, a, um, additional um, a negative delta or same negative delta? The advantage is near, neither here nor there. I mean, it's just basically unnecessary to, to do that. So I would probably do nothing except probably here, as I said earlier, some form of reverse RV reducing a strike here or there. So it, it, we could be a little bit more aggressive here with another type of short condor. And this would actually change nothing in terms of capital usage. We can't go too far in this trade um, because we still have some capital in July and we must prepare for a September entry, although, although it looks like we will have a very different environment for a September entry if we enter um, end of the week or early next week unless we have some strong reaction on 3000. So best is to just play around some short condors here, still not look at localized structures and, and accept that this, this is not going to be a great month. The B2B is about the same, more in line with a standard RTT. This one can lose a bit, about $400 if we do nothing, but if we just keep on doing uh, reverse harveys here. So this, this is basically minimal management just to make sure that we don't lose. Uh, on the B2B, there's no iron condor layer, so and I would advise against rolling the butterflies up. We can be treacherous in, 
if the market decides to reverse, even though this looks unlikely at this point. So really not much to do, simple uh, risk control, and that's it. Now let's look at the baby rhino. Baby rhino has, didn't have a great start. It's losing a bit of money at the close, but still, and we have um, the Vega to theta ratio that is coming to about 50%. So it would be time to look at reducing that ratio. There are a number of supports uh, all the way to 15 number, 1520. The, the Russell looks um, actually more bullish. I mean, if we see that we, it's a bit weak on the upside. So the best is to either start taking a bit of profit on the call calendar, but we would lose a bit of theta and then we control the negative delta with something like two PCS here. That would look great, good, good ratios. It's not going to be a great week, but that should be safe enough. In terms of capital usage, we can go up to 10, 6, 2. I mean, I've seen that in the since I resumed trading this one in March, I have never really got anywhere close to the $10,000 capital limit. So this trade in terms of uh, performance of uh, actual capital usage has been pretty good. So if we look in, and if we look at the reports for this one, as you can see, it's done pretty well since the beginning. Now a quick look at the previous one, previous baby. I thought last week we we would have a chance of of reaching profit target, but with the market rising, uh, the target looked more and more remote. So I closed it, if I'm not mistaken, on Thursday for how much it was about about 300 for oh yeah I didn't get good feels 284 284 which is um, actually only half of what I thought I would get, but uh, it's okay. So let's have a look at the trade lock for this one. So entry on the 21st, the, the, the Russell was a little bit more uh, agitated. So I had to uh, buy a PDS at some point, two PDS. So basically pulling back the short to, I mean, two shorts to 1520. And I even mitigated the Vega risk by, uh, I, I still, I mean, I, at that time I kept my three call calendars, but I added a put calendar here on 1500 just to balance the ratios. And then I think the, I closed the call calendar here and then towards the end, 26th and 27th, I reduced the position. So I, I closed one of my Burfini butterflies here. And then I closed the hedge, which is which was the, the, the put calendar on 1500. And then I started winding down the trade. I could have done a little bit less, but it's um, when you trade a weekly, a weekly trade. Uh, it's of course um, the management is of course affected by your personal lifestyle and other occupation. You don't want to be stuck to the screen all day, so sometimes you do preventive measures. Since the the guidelines are broad, so to say, that as long as you keep your ratios in check, I mean you you, you can basically do anything you want. So um, I chose just to keep delta flat, reducing gamma, reducing risk. And I suppose that if I kept the trade, um, I think if I if I had done nothing all week, I mean, basically, uh, if I didn't have the put calendar, which I put on and closed, right, there's not much to say. Let's assume we would be entering September on the SPX. I believe pricing, we can start looking at pricing even now. Uh, 85 so towards the end of the week if we were to enter considering that um, SPX is around 29.70 let's just for the interest sake look at how much would cost a broken butterfly up here 455 of course it's a bit more expensive but overall considering we are at all-time highs volatility is still hovering around 14.50 to 15 it's still Okay, I mean, in 2017 up to early 2018, the volatility was really dropping near all time highs. So, this is not great, but it's definitely better deal, so to say, than it has been in the past. So, trading 
uh, 100% as per rules, uh, meaning that entering the trade on 772 uh, without thinking too much about the, the volume environment is still okay. We are in an average, in, in a, around a long term average in terms of volatility. Um, so, uh, for those who just want to be a bit more mechanical about entering the trade, it's still pretty much okay. So, this means that even though my personal preference in terms of uh, risk aversion will probably prevent me from entering the regular September trade this week. I could just go buy the book again and enter regardless of volatility because we are more or less in the second tier in terms of volatility. The IV ranking is not too bad. There's nothing for those who just want to apply rules to the letter just to enter as it is.